Tamara Bouchahin, and I'm going to be presenting uh, my thesis work on the effect of flight intensity on the colonization and maintenance of Firebacteria on Ulva, with implications in integrated multi-traffic aquaculture and recirculating aquaculture systems. Before introduce, introducing my, my subject, I would like to say that uh, bacteria play an important role in the ecosystem, and even though we see them in a negative light, uh, we should shift our approach towards bacteria from a beat them to a join them approach. And in this master thesis, I will show you how we can use bacteria to our advantage. As you all know, aquaculture uh, is one of the first, is the fastest growing food production industry in the world, and it plays a key role in food security. However, current aquaculture practices impede the growth of the industry and have negative effects on the environment as well as on animal health and welfare. For example, Poor waste management have severe consequences on the ecology of, of organisms, lead to disease outbreak, eutrophication, and fish mortality. Antibiotic use leads, leads to uh, bacterial resistance, and coastal occupation is a great uh, environmental problem. Uh, these negative effects don't only affect the environment and animal health and welfare, but they also um, result in great production losses and impede the growth of the aquaculture industry. And so we need to find more sustainable uh, and responsible practices uh, in aquaculture. Uh, in this context, integrated multi-traffic aquaculture and recirculating aquaculture system is a, an emerging food production system that could mitigate these negative effects. In short, uh, integrated multi-traffic aquaculture, or IMTA, is the co-culture of two or more species from different traffic levels, uh, where basically the waste of uh, one species is the food for the other species. And so we would be able to produce more biomass by also reducing waste. IMTA can be an open water or uh, land-based. On the other hand, recirculating aquaculture system, RAS, is usually an uh, inland based system where fish are reared in tanks and the fish rearing water is treated and reused uh, with a series of wastewater treatments. However, the problem with RAS is that it is highly sensitive uh, to any changes in water quality parameters. These changes usually occur when metabolites from uh, fish waste accumulate in the system uh, and uh, this accumulation leads to really severe consequences on fish health and sometimes leads to fish mortality. And so the idea was to integrate IMTA with RAS where we would co-culture another species along with the fish in the tanks that could extract uh, these metabolites and leads to a more uh, balanced system. In this context, the seaweed Ulva Onoi was identified as being the best candidate to be co-cultured with Senegalese sole in IMTA RAS. Be uh, the photosynthetic activity of Ulva Onoi matches the metabolic activity of, uh, of sole fish. In this system, uh, the fish water coming from the fish tanks that contains CO2, nitrogen sources, and phosphorus, which are highly toxic to the fish at uh, high uh, concentrations, would reach Ulva, and Ulva is able to uptake uh, these uh, inorganic effluents and produce uh, biomass. And at the same time, Ulva is able to uh, release dissolved oxygen back to the fish tanks. And so uh, the co-culture of these um, two species together would lead to a more balanced uh, IMTA RAS system. And um, it's important to note that Ulva doesn't, as a biofilter, doesn't only um, have a role in bioremediation of uh, fish wastewater, it can also have a role uh, in bacterial control strategies in IMTA RAS. Some beneficial bacteria have been found on the surface of Ulva, uh, namely from the genus Phyobacter. So Phyobacter galiciensis, which was previously isolated from another species of Ulva, Ulva rigida, was found to be able to colonize the surface of Ulva onoi. And Phyobacter galiciensis can also produce a tropodithiatic acid, TDA, which is an antibiotic that kills or reduces the growth of fish pathogens, like for example, Vibrio angularium, which is one of the most common uh, bacteria that infect uh, finfish in aquaculture. And so, culturing ulva with ulva onoi with uh, a Phyobacter galiciensis biofilm as a biofilter in IMTA RAS uh, could um, through a probiotic effect, reduce our reliance on antibiotics and reduce um, aquaculture uh, fish pathogens. However, Phyobacter galiciensis is not the only bacteria able to colonize the surface of Ulva Onoi. There are other bacteria that are able to do so as well. Usually, bacteria that colonize the surface of Ulva Onoi have functional genes that allow them to do so and also allow them to use algae uh, metabolites as substrate for their own growth. But at the same time, Ulva benefits from having bacteria on its surface because they are essential for uh, Ulva Onoi growth and development and also protected from uh, other like pathogens in the environment. 
the symbiotic relationship between ulva and bacteria is based uh, on a functional interaction and it leads to the concept of the ulva holobiome. There are many parameters that affect the assembly of these bacteria on ulva onoi. However, light is a less studied factor. Recent uh, experiments showed that light negatively affects the ability of phyobacter to uh, high light intensity, negatively affect the ability of phyobacter to maintain a biofilm on the ulva onoi surface. This could be due to um, an algae response that could affect uh, phyobacter galaciensis. So this brings us to the aim and the objective of this master thesis. The aim is to contribute to the understanding of the conditions that favor the predominance of phyobacter in ulva species. And the objective is to determine the influence of light on the experimental colonization and maintenance of phyobacter bacteria on ulva, with a focus on its application as a bacterial control strategy in IMTA rats. So what we did was we took ulva onoi samples from a stock culture. The stock culture was started from a single clone, so uh, they were all gen genetically identical. We cut ulva onoi into discs uh, of 1.5 centimeters in diameters, diameter, and we put the ulva discs inside a multi uh, plate. Uh, in each well, we had 10 milliliters of ulva culture medium, and we enriched this medium with uh, with a nitrogen source to uh, mimic uh, wastewater in IMTA RAS. We wanted to expose uh, ulva discs uh, to uh, different light intensities. We were able to uh, achieve high light intensity by just putting the plate under incident light. Uh, low light intensity was achieved by putting two meshes over the plates, and dark conditions were achieved by putting the plates inside the black box. All of the plates were placed uh, in a culture chamber, and this culture chamber was maintained at 18 degrees Celsius. Uh, the ulva discs were agitated at 100 RPM, and the light uh, used inside the culture chamber uh, was um, a daytime flat panel. And we made sure that all of the ulva discs had um, a 12 hours of light and 12 hours of obscurity as a photo period. So, so this was our uh, experimental design. At first, uh, we uh, put all the discs under low conditions for seven days, and this was the acclimatization period. After seven days at T7, this is where we introduced phyobacter galaciensis to the, to the plates for it to uh, colonize the ulva surface. And this is also where we introduced three different light conditions, high light, low light, uh, and dark conditions. So this was to test the effect of different light intensities uh, on the colonization potential of phyobacter galaciensis on ulva onoi. After the colonization phase was over at T14, we uh, changed um, the light intensity to high light intensity for an additional seven days, uh, and this to test the effect of high light intensity on the maintenance of a phyobacter biofilm on ulva onoi. And this was termed uh, the growth phase. It is important to note that we uh, renewed the ulva culture medium regularly during the experiment to make sure that nutrients were not a limiting factor. Uh, at T0, T7, T14, and T21, we took a series of samples, first for growth by measuring the diameter and wet weight, for photosynthetic activity to make sure the uh, photosynthetic efficiency and the uh, algae were in good health, and we used PAM fluorometry for that. And we used samples for microbial analysis. In microbial analysis, we kind of had two subsamples. The first subsample um, was basically to just uh, take bacteria from the ulva surface and culture them in a petri dish. And we were able to count total bacteria and phyobacter colony forming units. The other subsample was supposed to be used for uh, molecular analysis using DNA fingerprinting and uh, um, gradient uh, gel uh, electrophoresis, uh, a denaturing uh, gradient gel electrophoresis. However, uh, we could not uh, do that because of the pandemic. And so the samples were frozen at uh, minus 20 degrees. Uh, we uh, statistically analyzed the data uh, using uh, an ANOVA uh, when the data was normal uh, and the crystal wireless test when the data were not normal. So looking at the results for the growth parameters, we were able to obtain uh, the ulva surface area by through the, di through the diameter measurements and the ulva wet weight. Uh, just to explain the graphs in general, we have from T0 to T7 the acclimatization phase. Then from T7 to T14, we have the colonization, colonization phase where Phyobacter galaciensis was introduced and under three different uh, light intensities. Um, and we have from T14 to T21, the growth phase where we had high light intensity um, applied to all disks again.
So we see a similar trend in ulva surface and ulva wet weight as they increase uh, through time uh, in high and low treatments. However, what's interesting to look at is the darkness treatment, where, um, as we expect, growth was delayed uh, in the colonization period because of the dark conditions. But what's, what's interesting is that when uh, high light intensity was applied, the, the ulva discs were able to compensate for this delayed growth, uh, and they reached similar surface area and wet weight as the other treatments who were constantly exposed to light. And so this means that ulva onoi is able to compensate uh, for a delayed growth. Looking at uh, the results for the microbial analysis, and looking at Phyobacter galiciensis uh, kind of concentration in red, we can see that after it was introduced at T7, uh, we see that there are similar trends in all treatments where the concentration kind of increases. Uh, however, we can see statistical analysis have showed that the concentration of Phyobacter in, under the darkness treatment was significantly higher compared to the other two. This means that darkness favors a colonization of uh, Phyobacter agalistensis on ulva surface. Um, then looking at the growth phase where we had high light intensity in all treatments, we can see a similar trend where Phyobacter concentration drops. Uh, this means that high light intensity um, negatively affects the ability of uh, Phyobacter to maintain a biofilm on ulva surface. And uh, we can, however, we can still see that at the end of the experiment, we still had significant, significantly higher concentration, concentration of Phyobacter in the darkness treatment compared to the other two. Looking at the total bacterial concentration in black, we can see that uh, there are other bacteria present on the ulva surface, and we can see kind of similar trends in high and low treatments, as well as darkness, but it's important to note that this increase and decrease here is um, related to the increase and decrease uh, in Phyobacter. We're also able to look at uh, the algae disks under the microscope at the end of the experiment, and here uh, it's important to look at the abundance and the position of the chloroplasts inside the cell. We can see that in the high light treatment, um, there was less uh, chloroplasts, and also the chloroplasts were positioned at the periphery uh, of the cells. And this was kind of a light avoidance response from the chloroplasts to be able to protect the algae cells from uh, damage uh, induce, induced by light. And we also found on some uh, spots on the algae discs, some white zones, as you can see here, that indicate damage. However, overall, PAM measurement showed that there was no damage done to the phot photosynthetic uh, apparatus. So what you want to know is, why did the concentration of Phyobacter drop under high light intensity? As you remember, we had a drop of uh, Phyobacter concentration uh, in the growth phase. And we want to know that high light intensity directly affect Phyobacter. Well, in previous experiment, it was shown that Phyobacter galiciensis is able to colonize a glass surface um, and maintain a biofilm on it under high, medium, low, and dark conditions. And so this means light doesn't directly affect Phyobacter. And it's actually a response from ulva that affected Phyobacter galiciensis. So did high light intensity favor Phyobacter being outcompeted by other bacteria? It seems that high light intensity did that, but either either through uh, algae metabolites and reactive oxygen species that negatively affected the ability of Phyobacter galiciensis to, to colonize and maintain the biofilm on the ulva surface, or uh, algae metabolites that uh, promoted uh, other bacteria on the uh, ulva on the surface. How, um, however, this change in bacterial community based on light uh, cannot be further investigated without uh, the DGGE analysis, and we need we need the results of this analysis to be able to tell more about these changes in bacterial communities. It's also important to note that we need to investigate TDA production and how light, high light intensity affects TDA production. It has been shown that uh, high light intensity could negatively affect uh, the ability of Phyobacter to produce TDA. However, we need the metabolomics to be able to uh, tell uh, more about that. And we did take samples for metabolomic analysis that will be uh, later on conducted. So in conclusion, dark conditions uh, favor colonization, while high light intensity does not favor the maintenance of Phyobacter galiciensis on Oonoi. Phyobacter biofilm maintenance seems to be inversely correlated with ulva growth. Further analysis are needed to understand the light-induced responses in ulva and Phyobacter that could modulate their interaction and identify the metabolites and chemical signaling involved. 
the implementation of Firebacter in IMT ARA system could be based in a two-step procedure with different light intensities, where first we would culture ulva under dark conditions to have uh, Firebacter and uh, the probiotic effect uh, that Firebacter has, and then when we are ready to harvest ulva onoi, we would subject it to highlight and it would be able to compensate for uh, its delayed growth. Thank you.